Welcome to the Not Old Better Show. I'm your host, Paul Vogelsang. Well, in anticipation of the nationwide release of the new movie Passengers, which will be in theaters December 21st, we did a show last week after collaborating with Sony and NASA, sharing a little bit of the of the PSA that was created to talk about some of this real space travel to uh, various parts of the galaxy and uh, what that might look like. It was such a huge hit with all of you, and I, and I think this movie Passengers is going to be that 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 I want to offer my review after seeing the film. And then we're going to hear from the two stars, Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. In a subsequent show to be released later today, we'll even be speaking with real-life NASA contractor and president of the firm Spaceworks. Uh, his name is Dr. John Bradford. And we're going to talk to Dr. Bradford about the real science, the, the hard science, if you will, around the notion of this idea of long-term hibernation, uh, sleep stasis, uh, induced hypothermia, all of these subjects which play such a fundamental role in the film. I, I'm sure you know, if, you, if you've seen some of the trailers, you, you probably are aware of the plot. Really, it, it's, it's excellent. Let me just run through it real quickly. Um, on, a, on a routine journey through, uh, through space to a new home, two passengers, and we're going to be talking to Chris Pratt, Jennifer Lawrence, they are sleeping in this suspended animation stasis, the hibernation. Uh, they're awakened. And um, it happens to be 90 years too early uh, as their ship malfunctions, as Jim and Aurora, again, Chris Pratt, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, as they face living the rest of their lives on board this uh, ship, but with every luxury they could ever ask for, they begin to fall for each other. So there's, uh, there's a, a romantic element in this, uh, and, uh, and they're unable to deny even their intense attraction until they discover that the ship itself is in grave danger. So with the lives of all of the passengers, there are 5,000 sleeping passengers uh, at stake, um, Jim and Aurora are off to save them all. So I have to tell you, I loved this movie. Chris Pratt, he is excellent as the action star that he's become. And Jer Jennifer Lawrence, she is a star. She's, she's lovely, she's glamorous, yet um, very down to earth, excuse the pun. And, and I'll bet she has a great sense of humor as a person. You can just kind of see the, the take that she gives this as the movie unfolds. And Lawrence, uh, who's in character as Aurora, comes to life. She surprised me. And I could see her, uh, her sense of soul, and and this rage that she feels about this this issue, and and her her sheer awe at this uh, this spectacle, because the the setting of the spaceship is fantastic. You, you have to see this behemoth of a ship to truly get the drama of this thing. But the lighting, uh, the music, and, and you're listening to some of that here, the CGI, which. Is, is seamless here. You really don't get a sense that we're uh, looking at anything other than these real characters in a real setting with this real drama ahead of them. It, it doesn't overwhelm. Um, by the way, uh, the robot vacuum cleaners and then Michael Sheen's character, his performance as Arthur, the bartending uh, android, they're fantastic. You, you gotta see this. Uh, you know, again, Sheen is Arthur, you know, must be seen his his smiling, uh, kind of sanctimonious uh, barkeep routine. He's got this slight irony. He's kind of slightly mischievous, but he has this kind of this side of him that uh, is a little dirty-minded. But uh, but it's brilliant. Michael Sheen is is fantastic. Uh, personally, I have to tell you, I love this uh, direction that Hollywood and. Uh, and science are taking together this aspect of hard science. And as I say, we're gonna be talking to Dr. John Bradford later today about the development of the, of the sleep technology and its role in the film and then, and then its use in our world today. But I love this idea of how the hard science is being brought in and we're being actually given a sense as to what really is kind of going on behind the scenes. We saw some of that in um, the, the movie The Martian uh, the book of the same name by Andy Weir, this element of what NASA research does, explaining the science through the use of it. Uh, you know, it, 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 this is welcome by me, and, and I love it. I think it's a great way to tell us uh, the story, the application, the usefulness of all of these projects that are going on within, within NASA uh, research. Um, 
So, but let's, uh, we're, we're going to get into this conversation with Jennifer Lawrence and, and Chris Pratt, who star in this, uh, this action thriller about these, these two passengers on a 120 year journey. Um, they are uh, respectively uh, Jim and Aurora, are uh, Pratt and, and Lawrence. And they're forced to unravel all of this, but we're going to talk to them about um, their lives, the lives of the thousands of passengers who are in jeopardy on board this ship, a little bit about uh, the, the movie itself, the set, all of those kinds of things. But uh, thanks uh, very much for um, uh, joining us today. Uh, certainly, uh, we're thrilled to be hearing from Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, Chris, let's let's start with you. Let, let's talk a little bit about Jim. He really has this this uh, kind of very distinct sense of humor. I wouldn't say that Jim is a, is funny per se. He's not necessarily like a comedian by by any means, but but hopefully there's some humor in watching him in this situation. So like you know he he's not gonna like open a stand up comedy club on mm-hmm. Homestead too, but uh, but hopefully you laugh a little mm-hmm. bit when you see some of the situations he's in. Well, and and Jim of course is the character played by you, and uh, maybe you could give us, Chris, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, background on the story itself, on what the film, what what Passengers is really all about. There are about 5,000 passengers on the Avalon traveling to this new planet called Homestead 2, and they they travel in what are called hibernation pods, essentially exactly what it sounds like, a cocoon inside of which each of these passengers is kept... uh, uh, in a state of suspended animation where they don't age, they don't grow, they don't get sick, they just stop all metabolic function. And he, his, his pod malfunctions, and he wakes up, you know, 90 years early. And Jennifer Lawrence, uh, thank you for joining us, too. We really appreciate it. I um, hope you guys are both well. But uh, Jennifer, tell us a little bit about uh, the character Aurora that you play. Aurora is very smart and very driven and curious. She's also the daughter of a very famous um, author, which I think always uh, keeps her wanting more and wanting to um, have her own name. So I think all of these combined with an adventurous spirit um, sent her off. And then Chris, what was your initial take on the film after first reading the script? When I read the script, I could not believe that I would be given an opportunity to be in this movie. Sometimes you read a script and it just grabs a hold of you and does not let go. I was never going to let anyone else play Jim. It was mine. The minute I read it, I wanted it. And that was going to be how it was. And I'm really so fortunate that it came together the way it did. And then, and then to you, Jennifer Lawrence, what was your initial take on the film after kind of reading this script? I just thought it was so interesting. I thought it was such an interesting concept, and I hadn't seen anything like it. Um, I, I, I loved the, the world. I loved the two characters. And I loved just the sheer idea of the whole thing. I thought it was so creative and interesting because it does, you do leave... You know, I close the script, and I hope people will walk out of the theater with a million different opinions. And that's what I really liked about the film, is that nobody's telling you how to feel. It's, it's all, what would you do? And what would you, it's a, it's a conversation starter. Honestly, in watching the film, the set looks amazing. I, I love the lighting, the design. Um, Jennifer Lawrence, talk a little bit to us about the set. And uh, what was it? that was so interesting about that set. The movie's very visually interesting because these two people are trapped, but it's the space and, and, the, um, and the visuals are so large. They're so lost in this giant space that's so much bigger than them. Um, so I thought that that was interesting, the, the dynamics between how they feel and what their characters are going through emotionally versus these giant, gaping space that they're stuck in. I'm a huge fan of, of talent. And when I see the sets that 
the, the people on this crew have built, I mean, you can't help but be in awe. There's a lot of really talented artists working on this movie, literally hundreds and hundreds of people so far. And that's not even counting the post-production process, which is in itself going to be another beast. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll forever be impressed by the magnitude of, of this type of a movie and this type of a set. So tell us a little bit about what we can expect from Passengers as audience. This is the kind of movie that is going to blow you away. And I think that's what you like in movies. Movies are entertaining. Movies are, can be scary. They're entertainment. And, and that's okay. But sometimes a movie will blow you away. And I think that's this movie. It really just sounds like a fascinating movie. I want to thank Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. I also want to make sure and thank NASA and Sony for making all of these shows available to us. Of course, we ran the exclusive on the PSA earlier. We're going to be also interviewing Dr. John Bradford, again, the CEO of the company Spaceworks. So join us over the course of the next several days for our continued coverage on the movie Passengers. Thanks very much. Enjoy. Enjoy.